So with an absolutely incredible couple of days in artificial intelligence, we're going to be taking a look at some of the most pressing stories that you once again did miss because with the release of Llama 3, there was actually a lot of information that many people didn't get to see. So, so one of the most important stories was Mark Zuckerberg actually talking about the future of AI devices. And I think it's kind of interesting if you haven't used his products before. I've used his other devices such as the Ray-Ban Meta Glasses and they are actually pretty decent in terms of what they're able to do. And combining them with AI in the future is going to be absolutely game changing. I think for the next version of the glasses, one of the things that I'm pretty excited about, I think we'll start getting some consumer neural interfaces soon. I think that's going to be pretty wild. Um, I'm not talking about something that jacks into your brain. I'm talking about something that you wear on your wrist that can basically read um, neural signals that your brain sends through your nerves um, to your hand to to basically move it in, in different subtle ways that are maybe not perceptible to people around you. But we're basically able to read those signals and, and be able to use that to control your glasses or other computing devices. And I think that's going to be pretty wild. And, you know, we're obviously still at the beginning of that journey because we haven't rolled out the first version of the product, but, you know, playing with it internally, it's, um, it's, it's really cool. So Meta are actually secretly working on non-invasive technologies to sort of combine existing technologies with the futuristic technology that you see Elon Musk doing with Neuralink. Uh, and it actually is possible. There's devices that you can have that can kind of, I guess you could say, combine the strengths of what Elon Musk is doing without the invasiveness. Because I know a lot of people are quite scared to get a Neuralink implanted into their brain, whether or not you are super paranoid or whether or not you just think it's not safe. It's completely understandable. I personally don't want a chip planted in my brain. But the point is, is that they are working on this and non-invasive means that you don't need to like plug it into your skin. It's literally just like an armband or just like a glasses that you put on um, and it's able to read the signals. And it's going to be something that is really futuristic because I remember I was reading the research about it and the research didn't really seem real. But um, if you view something like this, it says towards a real time decoding of images from brain activity. Um, and you can see here that, you know, it sounds like futuristic stuff, but you know how when they're like, okay, this AI tool can literally read your brain waves and understand exactly what you're thinking about. This is the kind of research that they are able to do. And you can see that the image shown here and then the decoded output here shown at one fourth the speed. So, I mean, right here, you can see that the results aren't that crazy i mean of course it's a horse and then it shows like some kind of animal there i mean it's not really accurate but we've known that before when we actually took a look at things like mid journey it kind of you know reminds me of like dali one and dali two in terms of how you know uh you know the image in terms of the resolution how the resolution wasn't really good and how the images had all of these artifacts and things like that and i'm guessing that in the future this is going to be something that actually is quite effective so i truly 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 cannot wait to see what kinds of devices that are going to be uh, in the future now i know that some people might look at this technology and think that this is just purely dystopian in the sense that we're going to have some ai overlords just reading our brains with the technologies and that might be a scenario and that are um i definitely think there's something that's really important that could actually help them get back on their feet so that's something that i did see with Neuralink, uh, and i think that is really the main use case for these with the recent release of humanoid robots in 2024 and with of course atlas's boston dynamics many people are currently speculating on which robot is going to be the one that is the winner takes all and i don't think it's going to be winner takes all i think it'll probably be like 50 50 or like 70 30 in terms of there's a high-end one there's one that everyone uses and the rest are just somewhere in between kind of like how we have phones but um i think it's gonna be interesting because you know we have tesla gen 2 we have h1 unitree and we have atlas boston dynamics i think overall what we will have this is just my personal opinion i think the boston dynamics is going to be the apple and i know apple is working on one but I, they're, they're kind of so far behind in terms of you know not building that they've been building a car for the past 10 years so i think that it's going to be pretty hard to catch up to where these companies are i think the main ones to watch are of course boston dynamics i think they are going to completely lead the way in terms of what they've been doing because they've already you've already seen how atlas has been like three to four years ago how it was able to jump over different things and able to you know run around and so i think that you know atlas has already shown what it could do the previous version of course the retired version on the left was absolutely incredible and i think if boston dynamics combine that with whatever ai company they choose to partner with it could be open ai could be anthropic could be google i mean you know i feel i feel like google might want at least one robot to be able to partner with i think it's going to be 
light years ahead of any of these because just what we've seen before from atlas if that's combined with any of the dexterity to be able to grab objects catch objects i mean it's going to be literally something out of a sci-fi movie um provided that this doesn't turn red so i think this is of course going to be number one and then second i think it's going to be between figure and tesla and the reason i think it's going to be between those two is because if we take a look at what tesla's been able to do tesla's moved pretty quickly and they do have the infrastructure they do have of course elon musk a huge team they've got billions of dollars um, and of course we've got figure which have shown us that literally in 18 months they've done something absolutely insane so i think if we're betting on you know the partnerships and how fast figure have moved considering the fact that they've got tons and tons of uh some of the best you know ai researchers in terms of you know robotics as well i think that they have a very good chance at competing with a large lab like tesla but i'm never going to bet against elon musk because a determined man is something that i've always seen to be able to achieve incredible things so i think those two will be second in line to take the cake in terms of what is possible because elon musk did say bring it on and i think in terms of what will be the cheapest most available i think it will be the unitary because these guys are moving pretty quickly under the radar um, and they're achieving quite a lot so i think further versions of this model are going to be pretty insane then we had something that is uh quite concerning to say the least um so you know opening i have been losing a lot of talent recently and you know i guess I guess the negative uh, spreads a lot more than the positive because they have been on quite a hiring spree. But I think this is something important to, you know, show you all. I mean, I was going to make a video about this, but, um, you know, just for time constraints, I just rather just add this into this video. But essentially, Daniel Coco Taljo of their governance team quits due to losing confidence that it would behave responsibly around the time of AGI. Um, and he wrote some very interesting things that I did do a video on last year that were actually quite interesting. I think, in fact, I think it was a couple of months ago, but just feels like, you know, with the rate that AI is moving, it was last year. But essentially, uh, he quit because he doesn't believe that they're going to act correctly. Now, basically, the reason this is so concerning is because you have to understand that AGI is going to be a technology which fundamentally changes how we operate as a society. And because of that, if OpenAI don't do what they said their mission statement is and if they decide to change things could get ugly pretty quickly because agi is you know not far from asi in the sense that you could use agi a true agi to get to asi although there's different scales you could use an agi to get to asi and if they use agi to get to asi pretty quickly because they have no you know uh, i guess you could say obligation to tell us if they've achieved agi and if they're scaling to asi i mean if i was open ai i would just scale to asi anyways because what would be the point and I think it's going to be pretty fascinating because, I mean, as he said, okay, and this is not me saying this, this is as he said, is that like, if you get to artificial superintelligence, you essentially have godlike powers over the people that don't. And basically, think about it like this, okay, if we brought our technology back to the 1800s, it would seem like everything that we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis is magic. I mean, we communicate through the internet. You're watching this video through a small device that's connected across millions and millions of miles. You can have an instant connection with anyone anywhere on the face of the earth, which is crazy. And for those of you who think, you know, I'm just exaggerating on the claims, these are some of the claims that he made uh around a couple of months ago and he said there will be agi soon any year now whoever controls agi will be use it to get to asi shortly thereafter maybe in another give or take a year and remember this is the guy that's working on governance or open ai or futures and i think don't control artificial super intelligence and that's the point i've always made okay if open ai have control of a super intelligence i mean doesn't that just instantly make them the most powerful company on the face of the earth and doesn't it mean that they pretty much can't lose because if you have someone that's magnitude or a system that's magnitude level smarter than us i mean the sheer amount of uh capabilities that it could probably output just far surpass anything that we currently have because it's able to evolve at a rate that we can't even perceive um and they're able to just move faster than any standard human company could even dream to so i think that that is of course going to be open ai's goal because once you have that i mean you have everything and and i think the point is is that like how do we trust the company to uh you know act correctly i mean even if open ai decided that they weren't acting correctly the super intelligence could just tell them provided they did have control of it and provided we're all still alive a super intelligent you know ai system could in theory protect them from any you know harmful doing and just make them retain power if they were like okay we want to become the most valuable company on the planet we want to retain uh power in this country in that country they could instantly do that with a click and nobody would pretty much be able to stop them so i mean it's kind of like this you know i guess we're just trusting OpenAI to do the right thing because once they have agi slash asi i mean 
you know, the cat's out of the bag. It's not like we can stop them even if we wanted to. I mean, what are laws and regulations if you have something that could do anything you'd want it to? And I mean, I know it sounds pretty crazy, but, um, you know, it's crazy until it's not. You know, GPT-4 was crazy until it's not. Image creation was crazy until it's not. Video to, you know, image to video, whatever, with Sora was crazy until it's not. So um, you can see, you know, currently no one knows how to control ASI. If one of our training runs work out way better than we expect, we'd have a rogue ASI on our hands. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of uh, crazy, crazy stuff that is very, very interesting from his, you know, statements that were from a couple of months ago. Um, and the fact that now he's quit because he's like, you know what, I don't know if OpenAI is going to take this seriously. I think it does say a lot about the state of OpenAI. Um, and I, I can honestly say, as someone who doesn't work at OpenAI uh, and has no ties to OpenAI, I can just say that I genuinely hope that for the sake of humanity, they do the right thing. And I know that's a crazy statement, just hoping that a company does the right thing because big corporations usually never do. They do what's in the interest of finances and money and big companies are usually greedy but you know i'm just guessing that i hope they do the right thing because you know what other shot do we have now senior ai researcher at nvidia and the lead of nvidia's gear team creating foundational models and humanoid robots and in gaming is stating something rather interesting he stated that humanoid robots will exceed the supply of iphones in the next decade gradually then suddenly and this is from someone's twitter thread where they are explaining a few predictions for the future and they they spoke about how labor will be near free we're going to have a billion and other robots freely freeing humans from the servitude of undesirable jobs and i think this is going to be interesting because you know on one hand we have you know the fact that you know humanoid robots are going to be able to be building quite a lot of different things and on the other hand some people think it's going to take your jobs i think it's going to be a mix of both depending on how economically viable these robots are but i do think there will be some industries where these kind of robots are just going to be doing just ridiculously interesting things and um elon musk also responded saying he agrees and i wonder how that will change the future in the sense that you know we're going to be getting a new class of uh i wouldn't say citizen but i think it blurs the lines a little bit because a robot's going to have rights so they're just going to be purely employees but considering the fact that in order to get robots right they're going to need to have some kind of agi level system controlling them i mean you know that kind of begs the question are we going to have you know this new class of population just being everywhere i mean i don't know it's gonna be interesting but uh yeah, whichever form factor these robots do take and whichever company is at the front of that, that one is also going to be something interesting, just like we spoke about before. Now, something that I actually did miss from Meta's release was the fact that their new AI tool, there's actually a secret feature. So for some reason, this the only reason I missed this is because it doesn't actually happen to every version. It's kind of like, I guess you could say, being rolled out in alpha to variety of different accounts there's no real way to get this but essentially you can click create an image of something and then as you're typing it kind of changes the image now i do know from using a vast different amount of ai tools that this is actually something that you can do with many different ai tools but i think it's kind of interesting to see that meta straight out of the gate they're coming out with not just a image creator not just an image you know to video creator but they're also coming out with something that animates the text as you write it so i mean from what i've seen so far a lot of people actually do like this technology so i'm guessing that this is going to be a hit and maybe uh chat gpt slash open ai are going to include this in the next product release but i think this might be the future as well because um you know iman mustak was actually talking about how we've moved to a stage now where we can literally kick generate and we get thousands and thousands of images. and i've used a variety of honestly like hundreds of different ai platforms where you can literally do this now so i think this will be the future of image generation where we literally get so many iterations that pretty much going to be spoiled for choice so um that was something that i did miss from the tutorial i uploaded yesterday you know what i decided to do i decided to focus all my attention, all my time on listening. So instead of doing something else, I just listened, listened, and listened. Because I'm a true believer that if you're really bad at something like listening, for example, it only shows you that, hey, you have to practice listening as much as you can. We introduce VASA, a framework for generating lifelike talking faces with appealing visual effective skills, given a single static image and a speech audio clip. Our model is capable of not only producing lip movements that are exquisitely synchronized with the audio, but also capturing a large spectrum of facial nuances and natural head motions that contribute to the perception of authenticity and liveliness. The core innovations include a holistic facial dynamics and head movement generation model that works in a face latent space, 
and the development of such an expressive and disentangled face latent space using videos. So that was Microsoft's VASA 1 and it's pretty terrifying for the average person because it's like okay why on earth did you guys create this because as far as we know this is literally just a deep fake. This does show how crazy deep fake technology is getting to the point where you could literally just upload one image you could rotate that image freely as a video and then you could instantly manage to clone someone's voice using you know many open source softwares and then of course have that person speaking and stating anything and the crazy thing is is that from the vast amount of demos that i've seen this actually does look pretty realistic and it actually reminds me of the thing that we got last month where there was a similar software to this where people were also quite afraid now i think this kind of technology like i said before i don't know why you developed this i mean i think the only application as pointed out by air explained was the fact that you could use this for virtual tutors maybe that's the only kind of thing maybe for virtual tutors maybe for virtual ai assistants but for the average person they should definitely not open source this they should keep this behind a lock and key and i do know that yes open source probably could catch up in a couple of months time because usually that is a you know how things work but i do think that you know maybe for ai doctors maybe for ai personal trainers that's what this purpose kind of serves maybe that's what you want but for anything else i just think that this is actually a net negative um despite it being actually kind of cool